Hello and welcome to News Click. We have with us Dr. Satyajit Rat, and we have the issue that has recently come to light, which we have discussed regarding Covaxin trials itself. Satyajit, when the approvals were given to Covaxin, it was set in basically what's called clinical trial mode. But now what we are looking at is mass vaccination. If we look at what's happening today, it's clear that these are full-fledged vaccination drive the government is doing. AstraZeneca has about two-thirds, one-third of it right now is co-vaccine. And this is not being done in so-called uh, clinical trial mode. This is really the vaccination drive. At the same time, we are also told that the volunteers are being asked to sign a form giving informed consent for clinical trials. Now, clinical trials generally are double blind, et cetera, et cetera. So none of that is happening. So how do you see this amalgam of vaccination come clinical trials, come informed consent that is currently taking place? So there are two cardinal issues involved in this that should be of concern to all of us. The first is the absolute lack of transparency and um, information availability on the part of the regulatory authorities, meaning on the part of the government. The regulatory authorities have not clarified what they mean by approval in clinical trial, how they want the clinical trial mode to be operated, what sort of data, what sort of consent process, what sort of analytical approaches, nothing has been clarified. In fact, Bharat Biotech pointed out that they didn't quite understand it either. And we have heard nothing subsequently about whether they have now understood it or not. First, second, the vaccine is being purchased by the government and implemented, which means that the government is responsible for its administration. Yet, consent forms are being required from the individuals being given this Covaxin, and the consent forms identify Bharat Biotech as the agency involved and responsible, particularly for treatment of adverse effects and so on and so forth. So the entire landscape of co-vaccine administration is a regulatory mess. Added to this is the problem of at least implicit coercion because this is, keep in mind, a, a vaccination campaign that's currently uh, focused on healthcare workers, primarily in the public or semi-public sectors. What they are being offered is a vaccine. And if they are that small minority at the moment, since vaccine supplies are very small for co-vaccine, if they are being offered co-vaccine, they don't have the option to say, I don't want this, I want that. As far as we, the rest of us can tell, they seem to be given the option, you either take the vaccine that's being given to you or you don't get a vaccine. And that, because co-vaccine is in clinical trial mode, it appears to be a violation of uh, freedom of choice. You know, the second part of it is that the government, when it said that it is going to give a mixture of the two. It never made clear who was going to get what, what was the basis of any of this. So this seems to be, appears to be arbitrary, except for the fact that this is really being tried in the government hospitals. This Covaxin seems to be targeting the government hospitals, while others, maybe also some other uh, public hospitals are also out of it. But this, there doesn't seem to be any of the Covaxin trials, at least in Delhi, which are targeting private hospitals. They seem to be entirely government hospitals. So therefore, it seems that the pressure on the health workers in this government hospitals is actually greater. Absolutely, yes. And uh, keep in mind that the signals coming about Covaxin have been so complicated and so un undirectional as to create almost legitimate vaccine anxieties. And I'm saying this despite my concern that we may be uh, feeding uh, vaccine anxieties. The government on the one hand puts out through its spokespeople statements that the vaccine is efficacious, 
yet there is no evidence even today even of the preliminary kind about its efficacy the uh, people who are receiving it are being told that they are being given it be for protection yet they are being told that they are being given it in clinical trial mode where protective efficacy is being tested for this is a regulatory and public relations mess of governance of yeah. It's very, great dimensions. You're very, it's, you're very interesting. it's very interesting that you are saying this because the, in, the informed consent form they're signing makes clear that phase one, phase two trials have been conducted. The efficacy, this is a part of the efficacy trial. So there are, have been no efficacy, efficacy trials in data on the, which, on the basis of which I, it has been cleared. That's again confirmed, not that it needed any confirmation but there is no data on clinical trial efficacy. That's the phase three trials efficacy. That's very much there. The second is Harshavadhan says both are equally effective. Now, how does he know that? The AstraZeneca vaccine and the co-vaccine uh, biotech, Bharat biotech co-vaccine, because one has efficacy data, one doesn't. So is it a matter of faith? Absolutely, it is a matter of faith, and we are being asked to take this on faith as a matter of vaccine nationalism. I'm, 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 I'm saddened by the necessity to bring this issue up, but that's where we have landed. So we have sort of nationalized the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine by calling it the Serum Institute Indian vaccine as well. But in, in essence, it is a Subramaniam, Subramaniam Swami's outsized influence on social media which seem to have precipitated this violation or bypassing, shall we say, of all the norms that the regulator themselves had specified earlier. What's Absolutely. The and, it's, norms which you don't and, and while the regulators are quite within their authority to make exceptions, making an unexplained exception and creating an uncharted pathway for its implementation is a ridiculous form of government. You know, this also means that while you give this informed consent, you're also giving away some of your legal rights. So while there have been uh, uninformed consent on Tuskegee trials and so on, we don't have informed consent of, uh, of this kind, which is coercive and which leaves you without a vaccine. This is, un I, I don't seem to recall any such instance. Maybe they did take place such instances earlier but I don't seem to recall any such instances earlier, but you got informed consent under coercive conditions. Frankly, clinical trials in India, our friends in public health activism will uh, tell us, uh, has seen many such examples of drug trials and related issues in India. Our soft implementation, to be euphemistic about it, of regulatory regimes, makes uh, all sorts of violations possible. The sad part is that in a high profile public sector pandemic response situation, we seem to be behaving in exactly the same poor fashion. Part of government public relations exercise having failed to control the epidemic, now to take kudos for the vaccination because they also seem to believe that the numbers are going down so they can claim the vaccine is what now control the numbers. And therefore this is, uh, you know, the government is to be congratulated on this biggest exercise of vaccination in the world, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But again, coming back to numbers, numbers as of now of the people to be vaccinated seem to be rather thin. And uh, compared to the three and a half crores that they're talking about, what we have, with what we seem to have, we were, seems to have been procured for the health line, frontline workers is only about 1.5 crores. So still some distance to go even on that score. It's also interesting the Residence Doctors Association who have obviously better knowledge of these things than most of the hospital frontline workers in Ramana Lohia Hospital, one of the bigger hospitals in Delhi with the government has refused to vaccinate themselves with this particular vaccine. And uh, it raises vaccine anxiety in the, in the larger sections of the people. And this is, has been also one of the COVID hospitals in Delhi. So this is also cause for concern. If this section- Let me, 
Let me underline something. And, and I think that it's important for, for us all to see this in perspective. If I were getting a shot of co-vaccine offered to me today under clinical trial mode, I would take it. It's safe, it's likely to be effective. At the individual level, there really isn't a risk. The concerns that are being expressed are at the level of poor to terrible regulatory governance and the lack of provision of true choice. This does not mean that the vaccine is an actual individual danger at all. It's a larger issue than that. It's a policy issue. It's a public behavior norms issue. It's not an issue of putting individuals directly and substantively at risk. So being forced is the key problem it, here. Precisely. Apart from the fact that this uh, clinical trial mode is completely misnomer because clinical trial does not mean vaccinating large numbers in this particular way. Well, one can imagine all sorts of clinical trials, not clarifying, not providing information, not making an explicit and proper framework for the implementation of your decisions is a regulatory failure. At the same time, the efficacy trials are going on parallelly. Precisely. So this is clearly a part of vaccination while calling it emergency use under clinical trial mode. Seems to be a fig leaf, if you will, uh, to hide the fact that you're really making it a part of your vaccination program and without giving people choice, as you said. And I agree with you that if today I, who have been listening to you, therefore I'm probably biased, if I'm offered a choice of this vaccine right now, I guess waiting for it, say, two months down the line, I would also take it. But, uh, but that's your influence. I don't know whether that's a scientific objective decision or not. But the point is we are not talking about that this vaccine is harmful. We are not talking about that this vaccine should not be taken. We should wait for something. That, that None of those are issues. Yes, it seems to have an antibody reaction, which is good. It seems to be safe. Safety trials have been conducted with both these two boxes being ticked. Yes, it is a choice if offered that a lot of people would take. It's being forced into this without choice and what you call the regulatory uh, obfuscation that exists with ministers, Minister of Health saying that this both have been found to be equally with equal, of equal efficacy for which no data has really been offered. So this is uh, what to at best we can say this is a kind of truth which needs really a microscope to see from where did he get the data for saying it is equally efficacious. So let me use your let me use your imagery and point out that, of course, this is a fig leaf. The trouble with the fig leaf is not so much that it's a fig leaf, but that it is so ill-designed a fig leaf that it does not hide what it is supposed to be hiding. Well, I think that gets us into very dangerous territory. We'll stop at that. Thank you very much, Satyajit, for clarifying this issue for us. And we wait for the government to give us better understanding of what the hell they are doing. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and do look at our uh, website as well.